How you doing guys, Big Mac Down School here today, back once again with another Mortal Realms magazine for you. It's time to take a look through the pages of issue 15. This video is brought to you by Splinter. Who's that? Why he's one of my Immortal sponsors over on Patreon of course. What's Patreon? I'm glad you asked. Patreon is where viewers who want to support the channel financially can do so. You can follow the link in the description below or up here to find out more. Back to the issue at hand. Issue 15 that is. This week we get some walls, fences and plinths. The second half of the Sigmarite Mausoleum set, you might remember we got the first part in issue 11. What we get is only half of what comes in the set you buy from Games Workshop. That's £55 and breaking it down, the part of the set that we get in this issue is worth £13.75 in total. Saving us 40% of a cracker deal if you ask me. Also in the mag we get more rules in the playthrough and learn a little about Flesh Eater Courts. Turning to the first page we get Children of the Storm. This is a two part section where you learn about a few more Storm hosts, the way they work together and the inter-host rivalries that spring up from time to time. Let's take a closer look at one of them. The Celestial Warbringers can see glimpses of the future. Each warrior has foreseen the exact hour and cause of their final death. You can argue that this is a, there's a certain nobility to this, because despite the knowledge, they continue to fight on in Sigmar's name. I personally wouldn't make that argument, but you could argue that anyway. Uh, on to the next page, we learn a little bit about storm keeps. These are the fortified structures built around realm gates and help ensure the forces of order maintain their foothold in the various realms and the junctions that join them. On to the next page, we get the Realm Gate War. Sigmar's plan to scour the forces of chaos from the mortal realms relied upon controlling the realm gates, the portals between the realms. His first act of war was to send the Stormcast Eternals to seize them. The Hammers of Sigmar were the first storm host to reach the mortal realms and gain victory over the forces of Khorne, seizing the Gate to Azir and destroying the Gates of Wrath, a corrupted portal that led to the realm of chaos. After capturing more gates, the next part of Sigmar's plan revolved around the old points, a nexus with gates that led to every other realm. This would lead Sigmar into conflict with Archaeon the Everchosen, who had built a great citadel, the Viren Spire, in order to rule over the old points in the name of Chaos. We'll get to that in the future though, now back to more of what we were promised. Flesh Eater Courts. First off, the Abhorrent Curse. The Flesh Eater Courts are cursed with an insanity that makes them think they are noble warriors. It was a punishment Nagash inflicted on one of his servants and it's since spread. Crazed, flesh-eating cannibals, the ghouls of the flesh-eater courts, are led by vampires whose curse allows them to control their hungry minions. When the many foul creatures of the flesh-eater court make war upon their enemies, they descend on them, tearing away chunks of flesh and feasting on the fallen. Winged terrors wheel through the skies above battle, while below, swarms of blood-splattered ghouls clamber over each other to join the feast. They carry makeshift weapons of human bones and stolen blades, Towering Vargoths and skeletal terrorgeists tear into their victims with claws and teeth. The abhorrent ghoul swells with pride as his glorious army tears its foe into shreds. Mordants are the lowest ranking members of the courts, more savage monsters than true soldier. They are utterly devoted to their master. Every Morden hopes to impress their leader and climb the ranks. When they achieve this, they are invited to the ranks of the abhorrent upper court. Courtiers are granted the honours of feasting on their master's blood. The role each courtier takes is carefully selected by the Abhorrent. Some are given the power of flight, becoming crypt infernals, others become crypt ghasts, leading mobs of ghouls into battle. Whatever their task, they take to it with relish, eager to prove themselves and rise further up the ranks. On the next page we get the Court of the Cannibal King. This week our regular short story pits the anvils of Heldenhammer, led by Lord Celestant, Orpharius, Dream Haunter against the Flesh Eater Court. The Retributors feature heavily in this one. They are very much the line breakers of the Storm Host. So they wield huge two handed hammers and they clear a path with each deadly swing. Then, gather your paints, gather you terrain. It's time to prepare to play another game. This is, of course, the how to build or how to paint section, rather. We don't actually get a how to build section in this mag. You'll have to refer back to issue 11 to see the how to build section where we got the first half of the Sigmarite Mausoleum. Charge of the Harrow. This week's battle sees a Nighthorn continue to arrive on the field of battle in droves. 
More chain rasps emerge from the hills and barrows, led by ghastly dreadblade harrows mounted upon ghostly steeds. Sounds like I'm reading poetry or something, doesn't it? The stormcasts have wheeled a Celestar Ballista into place and are ready to fire. And in gaming terms, that means we see the Nighthorn player controlling the Dreadblade Harrows and a unit of Train Rasps, and the Stormcast player controlling the Castigators and the Celestar Ballista. You might have noticed that both the Stormcast units have missile weapons handed at because this week we'll learn all about a weapon's range. In this case, it's the maximum range of a weapon, and both the Thunderhead Greatbow and the Ballista have 18 inches range. There's a nice guide over the next page that reminds us how to check line of sight from a model's eye view and walks us through how to check the 18 inch range of the weapons with a 12 inch range ruler that we've got obviously you just measure half again. Nice and simple though and we're one step closer to knowing the full rules of the game then. Onto the back page. Coming to the mortal realms. Next issue sees the storm host reinforced with the arrival of some more sequiturs and castigators and then with issue 17 we get possibly the ugliest models we've seen so far the Dreadside Harridans. However, ugly though they be I've got plans to convert some of them for 40k use, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on them, really. And that just about wraps it up for another week in the Mortal Realms. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button, and feel free to drop a comment below. Check out that link to Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you've not already done so. There are a couple of other things over here that might pique your interest. Videos, playlists, I don't know what I'm going to put up. You'll have to wait and see, or check it out for yourself. Thanks very much for watching guys, and I'll see you on the battlefield.